are the 30 best rockets in Spaceflight Simulator. From hyper-realistic SLS recreations to a literal tank. And the number one rocket built by Pepe took him over 350 hours to make. But let's start back at number 30, which is a rocket called Epsilon. It was created by this guy, and I especially love the great details at the bottom of the rocket. Since we have the best rockets at our disposal, let's make a space station starting with this one. Okay, now let's move on to the 29th rocket, which is the PLD Space Mira 5. On the launch, the tower falls away, and it can easily send more payload to the station. If you think this is starting to get fancy, just wait until we get to the best rocket on this list. But let's go to number 28, which is a tank. It was made by Marine 77, and I want to see how well it does on steep terrain. I have this planet pack with increasingly levels of difficulty from level 1 to level 7 and a drop test at the end. Let's see how far the tank goes. And while it's doing a terrain test, let's also drop a nuke on it to see if it'd survive. And it looks like it didn't even stand a chance. So let's go back to the terrain test. It looks like it just passed level 6, and it looks like it might be able to pass level 7 as well. Or not. Let's move on to number 27, which is the Atlas V401. I like the fairing details here, and the second stage engine looks nice. Let's dock it to the station, and move on to number 26, which is the Enterprise from Star Trek. It looks pretty nice, and let's see if it survives a nuke. The answer is no. Let's move on to 25, which is the Starship built by Pepe. This one took him about 50 hours and we can also dock this to the station. At 24 we have the Burj Khalifa. It's not a rocket but we can make it a rocket. It's really just here to see if it can survive a nuke. And clearly it doesn't seem to be able to. Moving on to rocket 23 it's called Puffin and it's made by this guy. I especially like the side boosters on this one and more so when they detach from the rocket. And we can also dock this payload to the station. Now let's switch things up a bit. At 22 we have a bike made by Mario. It is super cool to mess around with and let's put it at the terrain test to see how far it goes. And let's nuke it as well. Now let's move on to number 21. It's built by Eric Crazer, and it's like a shuttle on top of a fuel tank on top of a very large jet. I don't really know how it's supposed to be flown, but I'm sure you guys want me to nuke it as well. And if you think this is crazy, just wait until you see the best shuttle that I've included on this list. Moving on, we have a non-DLC Saturn B1 by Beamy. For non-DLC, I'd say this is quite impressive, and we can also dock the payload to the station as well. Next at 19 is the Proton M designed by National Hazard. Again, another non-DLC rocket, and it's actually designed for hard mode. Now we move on to number 18, which is a white van. And in my opinion, it's more detailed than the van in real life. But this is only number 18, and it only gets better from here. Moving on to number 17, we have the Proton K, which is another recreation, and it has 269 parts, and it's built by this dude. Next up, we have the Titan 4A. It's built by this dude, and it looks non-DLC compatible, and it contains a Voyager spacecraft. Continuing on to number 15 is the Vulcan Centaur 4. It's built by Arrowway Line, and it consists of 321 parts. It's another very well made recreation and I love the details on the engine in the last stage. Moving on to number 14, we have a rocket that I couldn't find the name of, so I'll leave as many details as I can about it in the description. I love this booster separation and it has a part count of 204 and it also comes with a traffic cone. Next we have a battle cruiser by Marmillo. It consists of 600 parts and has 8 guided missiles and 6 unguided missiles. Yeah, about that. Moving on to number 12, we have a Delta IV Heavy by the same guy who made the Proton K. The Delta IV has 517 parts, and at first I thought the staging was incorrect, but I was wrong. Next, we have the Zeltrion K by Zetal's Robot. The rocket is sponsored by a banana, and apparently me. It has 589 parts, and the unique fins make it stand out among other rockets. I like the details above the engine, and here we can see the second stage separating from the main stage. Now we are in the top 10 best rockets in SFS. These rockets have unprecedented details, which are borderline insane. Let's start with the space shuttle. I'm not 100% sure on the credits, so I'll put as much as I can in the description. It's one of the cleanest space shuttle designs I could find, and they really did a good job with the engines on the back of the shuttle. If you're wondering how the solid rocket boosters fall away, it really just explodes. And lastly, here's it detaching from the giant fuel tank. Next at number 9, we don't have the rocket, but we have the Titanic at 2,559 parts. It's actually insane. And since we can't send it to space, let's fry my computer and drop the nuke on it. Oh look, just like in real life. Now we are on to number 8. It's a side view recreation of the International Space Station, which has 1,327 parts, 6 solar arrays, and 9 different modules. It's probably the highest detailed ISS creation that I could find. Next up we have number 7. It's Pepe's Falcon 9 rocket, and the reason why I picked it is because of its incredibly high attention to detail on the grid fins and landing legs. Next at number 6 is a Saturn IB by Brioche. This is a no-clip, non-DLC, non-BP edited, 
recreation containing 2,652 parts. I'm not going to try to fly it because I don't know the correct staging. Next we have a Soyuz 2.1A. Remember this guy? He also did the Proton K and the Delta Heavy. I don't have anything else to say other than that this took probably a very long time. Next onto the number 4th best rocket. We have a top view recreation of a space shuttle and it comes with 427 parts. And unfortunately I couldn't find the original creator. I picked this as number 4 because I have not seen many shuttle recreations like this. Next we have the 3rd best rocket which is a 489 part MER based space station module built by Eric Kraser. My favorite part is the 3D solar panel effects. Now we are at arguably the 2nd best rocket. It's a Saturn V built by Eric Kraser and it contains 1178 parts. It's one of the most realistic recreations but it doesn't stand a chance against undoubtedly the best rocket recreation that will ever be made in SFS. And I'm talking about the incredibly detailed SLS recreation by Pepe. This thing is absolutely nuts. It has 3,698 parts, and I just don't know what else to say. It's just crazy. I mean, look at this. There's a wire right there. I just want to take another couple seconds to take in how cool this build actually is. And no, if I try to launch it, it will just...